Welcome to Art Explained, the home of art, art history, stories, and art education for all who are interested. A woman undressing to take a bath is at her most vulnerable, alone, half-nude, self-absorbed, unprepared for prying eyes. For centuries, however, women experienced the ordinary act of washing in less than complete solitude. Women of a certain class were rarely alone, even when attending to the most intimate parts of their bodies. Their lives were, in a sense, communal property, especially those of wealthier women, who until the mid-19th century were the ones most frequently depicted in artwork. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. We would appreciate a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. The evolution of how women experienced bathing and grooming and how artists portrayed those moments is the subject of our presentation. We will present many artworks, etchings, and drawings that reflect the most private moments in a woman's day as she washes her hair, buttons her dress, and swims. Some painters' early works on this subject inspired modern painters to adopt a radical and constructive means of painting. Throughout history, patrons of the artworks are fascinated by the nude human figure. Bathing is the washing of the body with a liquid, usually water or with another solution, or the immersion of the body in water. It may be practiced for personal hygiene, religious rituals, or for therapeutic purposes. By analogy, especially as a recreational activity, the term is also applied to sunbathing and sea bathing. Bathing can take place in any situation where there is water ranging from warm to cold. It can take place in a bathtub or shower, or it can be in a river, lake, water hole, pool, or the sea, or any other water receptacle. The term for the act can vary. For example, a ritual religious bath is sometimes referred to as immersion or baptism. The use of water for therapeutic purposes can be called a water treatment or hydrotherapy, and two recreational water activities are known as swimming and paddling. Throughout history, societies devised systems to enable water to be brought to populated areas. The oldest accountable daily ritual of bathing can be traced to the ancient Indians. They used elaborate practices for personal hygiene with three daily baths and washing. Ancient Greece utilized small bathtubs, wash basins, and foot baths for personal cleanliness. Later, Greeks established public baths and showers with gymnasiums for relaxation and personal hygiene. The word gymnasium comes from the Greek word gymnos, meaning naked. Ancient Rome developed a network of aqueducts to supply water to all large towns and populated areas and had indoor plumbing with pipes that terminated in homes and at public wells and fountains. The Roman public baths were called thermae. The thermae were not simply baths, but important public works that provided facilities for many kinds of physical exercise and ablutions with cold, warm, and hot baths, 
rooms for instruction and debate, and usually one Greek and one Latin library. With the fall of the Roman Empire, the aqueduct system fell into disrepair and disuse. But even before that, during the Christianization of the empire, changing ideas about public morals led the baths into disfavor. Before the 7th century, the Japanese were likely to have bathed in many springs in the open, as there is no evidence of closed rooms. In the 6th to 8th centuries, the Japanese absorbed the religion of Buddhism from China. Due to the principle of purity espoused by Buddhism, these baths were eventually open to the public. Only the wealthy had private baths. Public opinion about bathing began to shift in the middle and late 18th century, when writers argued that frequent bathing might lead to better health. Two English works on the medical uses of water were published in the 18th century that inaugurated the new fashion for therapeutic bathing. Turkish baths, based on the traditional Muslim bathhouses, which are derived from the Roman bath, were introduced by Britain by David Urquhart, diplomat and sometime member of parliament for Stafford who for political and personal reasons wished to popularize Turkish culture. He described the system of dry, hot air baths used there and in the Ottoman Empire, which had changed little since Roman times. One purpose of bathing is for personal hygiene. It is a means of achieving cleanliness by washing away dead skin cells, dirt, and soil and as a preventative measure to reduce the incidence and spread of disease. Bathing creates a feeling of well-being and the physical appearance of cleanliness. Bathing may also be practiced for religious ritual or therapeutic purposes or as a recreational activity. Bathing may be used to cool or to warm the body of an individual. Therapeutic use of bathing includes hydrotherapy, healing, rehabilitation from injury or addiction, and relaxation. That's all we have time for in part one, but be sure to visit part two. We have more of amazing artworks to share with you. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.